Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. As you know, the delivery appointment for the complete denture is the last appointment in the construction phase of treatment. During this presentation, I would like you to note not only the manipulative skills in how actually to perform the delivery appointment, but also I would like you to listen to the communication between me and the patient so that you can hopefully pick up uh, some of this information um, when it becomes time for you to uh, deliver uh, your first set of dentures. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. How are you this morning? Fine, fine. This morning, as you know, we are going to uh, deliver the dentures that we have been constructing for the last several weeks. This is kind of a long appointment, so I'd like you to just relax and, and uh, let me do all the work, and hopefully by the end of the morning we'll have a, a real good result, okay? Thank you. That's just right. First thing we'll do is we'll take out these dentures that you've worn for some period of time. Okay, now the first step in the delivery sequence of a denture, and at this time the dentures as they return from the laboratory should be thoroughly finished and polished and there should be no scratches, and the peripheries of the denture should be finished uh, as ideally as you think at this particular time. Obviously there should be no sharp areas on the peripheries and the peripheries should all be uh, uh, pumiced smooth in and polished. The first step in the delivery is to carefully dry thoroughly the inside of the denture and inspect the denture to make sure that there are no processing bubbles or sharp areas uh, such as the mid palatal uh, suture line or sharp areas in the rugae area or sharp areas if they're in uh, if it was a situation in which there were recent uh, extraction areas. In this particular case, uh, there are not any recent extraction areas, but the mid-palatal suture uh, is extremely sharp, extremely sharp. I could cut my finger with it. So before I even uh, try to deliver this denture to the patient, this area in particular, I'm going to carefully uh, uh, round off with an acrylic burr. And I'm gonna do that uh, right now first. Usually a small round uh, acrylic burr is all that you need to use to round off these sharp areas. And as you can see, I'm doing that very, very lightly and uh, really not removing very much acrylic at all. I've inspected the rest of the uh, inside, the tissue surface of this denture, and there really are not any other sharp areas uh, in it. You do the same thing to the lower denture. Carefully dry the surface with tissues or paper towels. Blow the surface dry. and then carefully inspect the surface to make sure again that there are no sharp uh, projections of acrylic that would either be processing bubbles or process small uh, processing voids in the stone uh, from which your master cast was, was made. Also on the mandibular denture, we wanna make sure that there are no uh, terribly sharp rough areas on the, on the ridge area. In this particular case, there are a couple of sharp areas back by the uh, retromolar pads, but I'm not going to reduce those at this time. I'm going to mark them with our pressure indicating paste and see how in effect they do uh, uh, affect or touch the tissue uh, when we uh, insert the denture in the mouth. Now, in the delivery sequence, it is extremely important to start with the maxillary denture. 
psychologically, the delivery appointment is uh, very important for the patient. And it is important to, uh, with any new denture, to ensure the patient that his upper denture in particular is going to stay put as ideally as uh, you would like and as he expects. So always start the delivery procedure with the maxillary denture. I'm going to carefully put some, some water on the denture so that we can create a little bit uh, of a seal. And I'm going to first carefully insert the denture I'm not going to push uh, on the denture hard. I'm going to gently insert the denture and try to push it to place. Now, as I do that, I always uh, ask the patient whether I am pinching any tissues as I hold it in there. And um, uh, if he says yes, then we take it out and inspect it and mark it. If he says that it is not bothering him, then we can exert a little bit more pressure on it and hopefully uh, push the denture to place and, in effect, here, the seal created uh, in the post, uh, posterior paddle seal area. Now, Mr. Johnson, as I push the denture in, do you feel any sharp areas? Is it, is it pinching your mouth any place? When I just told it there? None at all. Okay. Now, I'm going to push a little bit harder now, and if, if I hurt you, you tell me. Now, I've pushed the denture, and I've, I've been able to hear the saliva expressed out the posterior border of the denture, and the denture is indeed good and firm and, and securely uh, uh, held in the patient's mouth. Does that hurt you now when I push good and firm? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Notice also that I am pushing right in the mid-palatal area, and I'm, I'm using my uh, index finger, and I'm pushing good and firm. By pushing in that palatal area, we are distributing the force over the maximum stress-bearing area, and that, that way we can get uh, a good idea of uh, uh, sensitive pressure areas. If we're pushing on one side or the other side, then we'd get kind of a false impression of how the denture was indeed uh, fitting. Now, after this initial uh, delivery, we again wipe the surface dry. and we will mark the surface with pressure indicating paste. Now the pressure indicating paste comes to you in a little uh, jar. It is extremely important to not contaminate this jar, so we take out a small amount and we can put it either on our bracket table covers or this little pad, and we use it from the pad, not from the uh, gross container jar. With the pressure indicating paste comes this small little uh, brush. This brush has extremely long bristles, and these bristles uh, will leave a pattern in the pressure indicating paste as you apply it to the denture. The parts of the maxillary denture that you usually are interested in checking for pressure are the distal buckle flange areas, or the tuberosity undercuts, and we will mark these bilaterally. In this particular case, there are small undercuts in the anterior flange area. It is not necessary to completely cover the entire tissue surface of the denture with pressure indicating paste. We are assuming that the impression that was secured was an accurate impression, and therefore we are only interested in uh, checking those areas with pressure indicating paste that, that may impinge on the soft tissues of the mouth. Now, if we can have a close-up of uh, the denture, I think that you can see that the small brush has made uh, very fine striation lines in the pressure indicating paste, 
and I have placed those in uh, uh, the position of going front to back or around the periphery. I'm doing that purposely so that now as I deliver the denture, if we should get any scuffing on the paste, which in effect shows scuffing of the denture on the tissue, the scuffing will be in a direction perpendicular to those striations. Now, we push the denture firmly to place. Again, I'm pushing in the mid palate area, and I'm pushing until the denture is well seated. We immediately take the denture out and we expect, inspect it, and we can see that on this distal buccal flange, there is what we call burn through, or the paste has been uh, wiped off by the soft tissues. This tuberosity area over here does not show any burn through in the undercut area. In the anterior region, there are small burn through areas on the uh, inside of the labial flange that I think you can see there. Now I'm going to carefully adjust these areas with a small round acrylic, acrylic burr. Now these areas we adjust very, very lightly. We are not removing a great deal of acrylic. As I adjust this, you can just hardly see the acrylic chi chips being uh, thrown off by the burr. Now, these acrylic chips need to be wiped out of the denture uh, with tissues or paper towels. They also can be scrubbed out with water. They always should be removed before the denture is delivered again. Now, we are going to add a second application of pressure indicating paste, and we are going to add it in the same areas. If there were any inaccuracies in our final impression, or areas that we may have corrected with number four soft wax, these areas we would remember, and we would mark these areas with pressure indicating paste at the time of this delivery appointment. As you can see, a very, very thin film of pressure indicating paste is, is necessary, and we do not use a great exorbitant amount. Again, the denture is carefully delivered and seated to place. I think you probably could have heard that time the seal of the denture, the saliva being expressed out the posterior area. I can feel that the denture is seating more firmly. And it is seating more firmly because those small irregularities that have just been relieved allow the denture to seat further. On inspection, again, the contact areas are much more even, and we don't see any one or two areas that really is showing uh, burn through more than the others. Mr. Johnson, when I insert your denture, do you feel any rough areas now, or does it feel pretty comfortable in your mouth? Very comfortable. This. Oftentimes, questioning your patient also is a good indication that there are no areas that are grossly ill-fitting. And I think, in this particular situation, 
No further adjustment is necessary at this time. We now will go to the mandibular denture, and we will basically do pretty much the same uh, procedure. The areas of the mandibular denture that we are primarily concerned about as far as uh, indicating with pressure uh, indicating materials are the distal lingual flange areas and their associated undercut. In many patients, this undercut is not tolerated very well, and this we need to mark at the delivery appointment to make sure that we don't have any gross uh, scuffing of the area. In this particular uh, situation, the ridge uh, for Mr. Johnson is extremely sharp, and so I'm going to mark this ridge crest uh, area just to make sure that we don't impinge that tissue uh, with the denture. Again, I'm applying the pressure indicating material so that we create these fine little striations in the material with the brush. This will be helpful after inserting the denture to read the scuff areas that will be seen in a path perpendicular to these striated areas. Again, notice that very little of this material is necessary. And it is also not necessary to completely cover the entire tissue surface. Now, I think you can see the areas of the mandibular denture that we uh, routinely check with pressure indicating paste. this way just a little bit, okay. Now, we very carefully deliver the mandibular denture. Again, making sure that we don't too quickly force it to place. Now, Mr. Johnson, when I push on this denture, am I pinching you any? No. Okay, just relax your tongue. Again, I'm pushing the denture to place, but trying carefully not to push it too hard. Okay, now I'm going to push kind of hard now, and you tell me if this hurts you, okay? Does that hurt you when I push good and firm? Yeah. Okay. Now, when you're checking with pressure indicating paste, it's extremely important to not scuff or remove the paste when you get the denture in and out of the mouth. And I did a little bit on that time on this uh, periphery of this distal lingual flange, and that is why the pressure indicating paste just on the tip of the flange has been removed. You can see here that the ridge crest is in contact And over in here, the ridge crest is in contact. But it is a little bit heavy back in here in the retromolar pad area. The retromolar pad tissue, as you know, is extremely movable tissue. And oftentimes, it is very difficult to capture that tissue in a state of rest in the final impression. So oftentimes, this area needs to be relieved at the delivery appointment. Similarly, the undercuts on the distal lingual flange may need to be relieved at the time of delivery. And those I will relieve now with the same small acrylic burr.
Notice now that I am just lightly relieving these scuffed areas. I am not removing a great deal of acrylic. And then this sharp ridge tissue, in effect, all I'm doing is lightly smoothing it or rounding it. Now, again, these acrylic chips are carefully wiped off with tissues. These, of course, if allowed to remain on there, would prevent the denture from seating uh, fully in the mouth. Now, we would repeat this procedure two or three times until we indeed had even contact of all the uh, tissue surfaces or the areas that we marked. And often two or three times it is necessary, particularly on the lower denture. After this is completed, again, we will carefully wet the dentures. And we will again check them in the mouth. Oftentimes it is advantageous to thoroughly seat the maxillary denture and then deliver the mandibular denture. Open real big, that's it. And at this time, I am going to be checking visually the peripheries of the denture. For the lower denture, if we carefully hold the denture in place on the occlusal surfaces with one finger, we can raise the cheek and the lip with the other finger and check to see if our peripheries are overextended. In this particular situation, the patient has so little ridge that it is difficult to evaluate the overextensions. But when I pull on his cheek up and forward, I can feel the denture being displaced a little bit. This oftentimes is a key that the anterior border here of the distal buccal flange is, is slightly overextended and needs relief. We can check this another way with disclosing wax, which is a little bit different than the pressure indicating paste. This is a very soft, uh, a very fluid wax that can be applied to these areas of possible overextension. They can be applied with a number seven spatula or a uh, any wax spatula. Small amounts are flowed on the periphery. This indicator wax can also be used, as I have demonstrated, for the pressure indicating paste. And after it is applied, it is very lightly flamed. Until we get a even covered surface. Now, after that wax has just solidified a little bit, we can carefully insert the denture again, making sure not to remove the recording medium as we insert the denture, carefully pushing the denture to place. And as we lightly hold the denture to place, lightly pulling on the cheek to mark that area that we thought was possibly overextended. Removing the denture, 
we can look at that area in the entire periphery of that flange, the material has been wiped right off. This is a good indication that that flange is slightly overextended. We can correct that again with acrylic burrs. For ridge extension, it's a little easier to use a flame-shaped burr or a different shaped burr than a round burr. The shape of the burr really is not, uh, is not important. It also can be, the peripheries also can be shortened with use of an arbor band, as you are already aware. Whenever adjusting of the peripheries is done, before the denture is finally delivered, it always needs to be repolished with pumice. Now, whenever we adjust peripheries, we don't just arbitrarily remove acrylic from one spot, but we blend the part of the acrylic that we remove into the tissue surface and also the art surface of the denture. So we get a nice round adjustment to the, to the flange. And similarly, we would check this again uh, two or three times to make sure that that periphery length was indeed uh, the area or the amount that we desired. Now, after peripheries have been adjusted, the basal surfaces have been adjusted, we are now ready to uh, start being concerned with the occlusion or the, the uh, uh, relationship of the uh, teeth portion of the dentures. Up until this par uh, point in the delivery sequence, we were only concerned with the fit of the tissue surface of the denture. Turn this with chest a little bit. Okay. Okay. Is that the place there now? Now, just relax and let me wiggle your jaw. Notice now that on the lower denture, I am holding the denture down with my two index fingers and I'm holding the denture down with the two index fingers. I am holding the mandible with my two thumbs. And in this position, I have complete control of the patient's mandible. I do not grab the mandible by the chin because when you do that, the lower denture becomes loose from the area in which it is meant to seat. Holding it this way, I am holding the denture in place, a mistake that many uh, practitioners and students make when they do this method is to push with their fingers back. This pushes the denture back on the tissues and does not position the jaw in centric jaw relation, which is the thing, of course, that we are trying to record. So hold the denture down with the fingers, support the mandible with the thumbs, and then in, and in that position, Try to record centric relation with the patient. Now, this patient's very easy. Uh, he goes back into centric relation very easy. I'm wiggling his jaw. Just relax now. Let me wiggle your jaw. Let your jaw go back. There we go. Now, you can see that the jaw is just swinging right freely up and down. Just relax. Let me wiggle the jaw. Let me wiggle the jaw. That's right. Now, just lightly close until your teeth first touch light as a feather. Now, in this position, when I am holding the denture in place and we are allowing first contact, it appears to me that we are getting very light contact in the bicuspid area bilaterally, and the molar area bilaterally is slightly open. Now again, I'm just visually checking the occlusion. Now, open for me. After we visually check the occlusion to make sure that the occlusion is indeed in the right ballpark, we are ready to 
secure our recording medium or our byte registration, which we will do um, in just a second. If on the visual check we had noticed that the occlusion was grossly off, either grossly premature in the posterior area or premature on one side, the first thing that we would do would be to inspect the heels of the denture, the heels of the lower denture, and the uh, tuberosity area of the upper denture to make sure that the heels were not uh, interfering and, in effect, touching uh, uh, prematurely to the teeth touching. This we could do by taking a quick bite in wax and then holding the dentures in our hands and seeing if, indeed, the distals or the heels of the denture were touching prematurely. In this particular situation, that is not the case. The, the teeth uh, do touch lightly. Uh, as I stated, the bicuspid area is slightly premature, and so now we uh, will proceed with our uh, bite registration for our centric relation. The first step in securing the occlusal registration is to insert the maxillary denture make sure that the maxillary denture is inserted, and instruct the patient to lubricate the occlusal surfaces of those maxillary teeth with his tongue and saliva. This really is all the lubricant that we need, and further lubricants such as Vaseline uh, really are too much and aren't uh, necessary. We then place four puddles of aluwax, and aluwax, as you know, is a very soft wax that has aluminum particles in it, and we place the aluwax on the mandibular denture. We must remember that for our remount procedure, we have previously made an occlusal index on the articulator that has the index of the maxillary occlusal teeth. So our bite registration should always be with the mandibular denture so that the maxillary denture can seat into our previously made index. We heat the number seven spatula in the flame and then melt a small portion of aluwax and then place the aluwax on the occlusal surfaces of the denture, and we place it on the occlusal surfaces of the most mesial posterior tooth, and also the most distal posterior teeth. All of these puddles of aluwax should be of the same softness or consistency. So after I place these four puddles on here, we go back and make sure that each of them is uniform in softness. Now, aluwax stays soft for a long period of time, so you really don't need to hurry with it. After we get the wax to soft, uniform softness, we come back to the patient, and just as the wax loses its sheen, we insert the denture, again making sure that the denture is properly placed. We hold the mandibular denture down with our index fingers and also our thumbs bilaterally. We have our patient just relax and we carefully maneuver the jaw to centric relation and we instruct the patient to just lightly close until they first touch light as a feather. After the teeth are lightly in contact for just a few seconds, we have the patient open, and we remove the denture. We inspect these four additions of wax to make sure that we have picked up 
occlusal surface of the maxillary tooth, and what we are after are, is just the cusp tips, making sure that we have cusp tip contact in each of these four puddles. And if we have that, then we uh, take the denture and the aluwax to the sink, and we run this for at least a minute, several minutes, under extremely cold water to thoroughly chill and harden the wax. After the wax has been thoroughly chilled in cold water, we again return to the patient to verify the bite registration. Open for me. Carefully insert the denture, making sure not to mar the portions of wax. We make sure that the denture is thoroughly seated on the tissues. And then we repeat or verify our centric relation registration. Okay, Mr. Jensen, just relax a minute and let me wiggle your jaw. That's fine. Now just lightly close until you first touch light as a feather. Now, he has closed back in the original uh, regi uh, registrations of the cusp tips. He has done it on here the left side. He's also done it on the right side, which will be difficult for us to show. This is verifying our uh, occlusal registration. We can be pretty certain at this particular point that the centric registration recording that was made was indeed accurate. Now, we can take the denture out, open for me. We can remove the dentures. We can thoroughly dry them. And now the dentures uh, can be returned to the articulator for the uh, post-processing or patient occlusal equilibration. Uh, this is done, as you know, by inserting the maxillary denture in the occlusal index and joining uh, the denture to the articulator with quickset impression plaster, then removing the occlusal index, joining the maxillary and mandibular denture to each other with sticky wax, keying in, of course, with these occlusal registrations, and then looting the mandibular denture to the articulator again with quick set impression plaster. After the occlusal equilibration has been completed, and this of course is an integral part of the delivery uh, sequence and delivery procedure and it is not a separate entity, the dentures are uh, ready to finally deliver to the patient with a series of patient instructions, which is always uh, necessary. Now, Mr. Johnson, we, I know this has been a long appointment for you, and there's a couple more things that I need to tell you before we let you go for today. You may have some difficulty. OK, now just close together and just hold it there just for a minute. You may have some difficulty uh, with your upper denture falling down a little bit in the next day or so. It's been a long time since we took the final impression for your uh, new denture, and your tissues have changed a little bit since that time. So if your upper denture falls down um, a little bit in the next day or two, don't be concerned about that. I think that that's one of those things that's a common problem, and I think that that will remedy itself. The other thing that you will experience, many patients have some degree of minor discomfort, or what patients often refer to as sore spots, that will develop uh, for one reason or another with any new denture. And if you do get some sore spots, don't let yourself be discouraged because this is one thing that's uh, we hate to see it, but it, it often occurs. And this is something that, of course, we will uh, take care of as they develop. Now, many patients uh, want to know what types of foods they should be able to eat, what they should be able to experience. Um, a whole lot of things, and this is what I'd like to go over with you now. Don't try to eat 
terribly difficult foods now for the next couple of days. Keep your diet relatively soft. Um, such things as casseroles and meatloafs, uh, chunky soups, this type of consistency of food is always a, a good consistency of food to get started with your new dentures. Your new dentures are quite different than your old dentures. The teeth are positioned in a different uh, position. The teeth come together in a completely different manner, and so eating is going to be quite different for you until you get used to uh, this new denture. Similarly, speech may be a little bit difficult for you. The front teeth are positioned in a different relationship to each other and also in a different relationship to the tip of your tongue. So many speech sounds will be difficult until the uh, tongue relearns where those front teeth are. So particularly S sounds and TH sounds uh, may be a little bit troublesome to you and you may whistle a little bit and lisp. Don't be concerned about that. Also, I think that will also remedy itself in the next day or so. For cleaning your dentures, there are many available denture uh, cleaners on the market. We feel uh, at the school that one of the uh, best denture cleaners is Cleanite, uh, and there are others if you prefer those, but we want you every day to thoroughly clean your denture, not only in a soak solution, but also thoroughly scrub the dentures to make sure that they uh, keep clean. The other thing that we want you to do is to thoroughly scrub the soft tissues of your mouth. I will give you some soft toothbrushes uh, today, and I want you to thoroughly, uh, at least once a day, carefully massage uh, with this soft toothbrush all the tissues of your mouth that support the dentures, and also all the other tissues in your mouth, the insides of your cheeks, your tongue, etc. cetera. Uh, difficulties with speech, if you have any, and I've noticed the things that you've said today, and I don't think that you're really going to have too terribly much trouble, but if you do have difficulty in speech, you can practice uh, uh, making your speech better by reading magazine articles out loud. Okay, are there any questions that I haven't gone over with you today? No, I think it's just fine. Okay, now, our uh, assistant will make an appointment for you tomorrow. As you know, this is uh, part of our uh, denture uh, treatment program. We always like to see our patients 24 hours after the delivery appointment if necessary. And depending on how uh, much difficulty you are having tomorrow or not having, whatever the case may be, then we'll schedule the rest of our uh, follow-up appointments accordingly. Okay? Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.